The numbers are staggering. 1.5 million Canadians live with some degree of vision loss, with that number expected to double by 2031. Thanks to advances in medical technology, there is hope for those who suffer from vision loss. And it starts, of course, with sight-saving research. Joining us now to tell us more is Jack McCormick, who lives with severe vision loss, and Dr. Briar Sexton, a neuro-ophthalmologist. Uh, thank you both for joining us today. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having us. Um, Jack, maybe let's start with you. For when sure. did your vision loss begin? So I've had vision loss my entire life. Uh, my parents noticed when I was about the age of two that I did things a little bit differently. I tended to look at bright lights. Um, and I was diagnosed, and it's been something I've had my entire life. How has it affected you? Um, you know, it's taken a time to get used to it and learn uh, techniques to get used to my vision loss, especially as my vision's decreased. Uh, getting a guide dog was one of those things. Learning Braille, learning to use a computer differently. Um, but it's, I've still been able to, you know, be a productive member in society, have a job, and, you know, travel independently and things like that. All right. Now, I understand that um, there is um, therapy. Uh, yes. treatment that you could access, but Dr. Sexton, there are some barriers to that. Um, what are they? At the moment, we're waiting for Health Canada to approve the drug, and once the drug's approved, cost will be a barrier. One treatment is all that's needed. It's a one-time treatment for life, but at present, the cost is three-quarters of a million dollars. So what happens uh, for people that, that can access that? For that and for other orphan drugs, it presents a real challenge, and what we're hoping is that by presenting the economic analysis that $15 billion a year are lost in productivity due to vision loss in Canada, it's expected to double by 2032, that investing in young people, investing in their vision now, will have an economic payoff. The numbers make sense. So what needs to happen then for that to, to go forward and for the funding uh, to be approved for that? I mean, it's advocacy. It's public awareness, getting the public to buy in that it's a good investment of dollars. It's government awareness, getting the government to buy in that they can't look at this in a silo of what it costs one department versus another versus another. Mm -hmm. and, and opportunities like this to share this story with other Canadians. Jack, how frustrating is it for you? Um, I, I would say quite frustrating because, you know, I know that this treatment's out there and I know that um, as my vision decreases, I become less likely to be a candidate for that treatment and it's something that is time sensitive for me because the sooner I can receive treatment for my vision loss the larger impact it will have on my life um, yeah uh, so what would you like to do going forward I mean obviously you're here talking about yeah. it today uh, to raise awareness about the issue but uh, what kind of support do you need I think it's really about public awareness and understanding uh, the benefits to society and individuals that come from uh, supporting treatments like this and um, the value that comes from supporting research and uh, having people access it. Now, in terms of the research that's being done, there's a conference being held in Vancouver. So how much excitement is there around that? I don't even think you can describe it. I started my residency in ophthalmology in 2000. You would have thought this was outer space. You know, it was like the Jetsons. It was never going to happen. As the breakthroughs start to come, we start to hear our big researchers say within 50 years, within 25 years. Then they're saying within 10 years, within five years. Now they're saying within one year, within two years. And for my patients who are living with vision loss, that kind of hope is so impactful. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of excitement. Absolutely. Yeah. To share my own story and the level of excitement associated with it, when I was originally diagnosed as a young child, uh, the message my parents were given was, um, Jack is going to live with impaired vision. Any treatments that are being developed right now have a bigger risk of making his vision worse than better, so it's probably not worth it to him. Fast forward 20 some odd years, and now we've got a treatment that can make a difference. Mm -hmm, absolutely. I guess, are you hopeful that, you know, this is a treatment that is inaccessible for most people right now because of the cost, but do you think that those costs will come down over time? It's hard to speculate. I hope that they will, and I hope that if they don't, we still continue to invest in our young people and invest in their vision. All right, incredible. Well, I want to thank both of you for joining us today. It really is um, an incredible amount of research and innovation that we're creating in this field, um, and thank you for telling your story, Jack. Happy to. All right, we're going to take a break, and uh, thank you. We'll be right back.